Hi everyone, I'm Naima. Welcome back to my channel. It has been a few weeks since I sat down to record and as you'll see in this video, it's because I have had a month full of intense ups and downs. I'll be telling you about how I have been trying an enzyme called natokinase for long COVID, a supplement that has been used quite widely within the long COVID community to tackle the problem of microclotting. I have been using this for the last six weeks. Some of you you may have heard of natokinase and I'm sure a lot of you will have heard of microclotting which is potentially one of the key drivers of long COVID symptoms. In this video I'll be giving you a brief overview of what microclotting is and its link to long COVID. I'll be discussing some of the treatments for microclotting and a few of the over-the-counter supplements that have been discovered over the last few months to have natural clot busting abilities and then I'll be telling you about my experience over the last six weeks taking a couple of these supplements. If you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe. I make videos about my experience with long COVID and everything I learn along the way. There have been several studies exploring blood samples from people with long COVID where microclots have been discovered in the blood plasma. These are different to traditional blood clots. They're not big enough to cause major thrombotic events, but they're large enough to block capillary beds, for example. They're resistant to the blood, to the body's normal breakdown processes and contain molecules that can cause inflammation. They might be blocking blood vessels throughout the body and stopping oxygen from getting to where it needs to go. They could be causing symptoms like shortness of breath, brain fog and debilitating fatigue. In the studies that have been done so far, there are microclots found in nearly all of the long COVID patients and none of the healthy controls. Microclots in long COVID are being studied all around the world now by researchers and clinicians who refer to themselves as hashtag team clots on Twitter. And they're hopeful that this represents a breakthrough in understanding and treating long COVID and other related disorders. So the there are still a lot of unanswered questions, including are these microclots also found in people who have an acute infection or is it only people who develop long COVID? What symptoms are these microclots responsible for? Are they just a side effect of long COVID? Are they not actually responsible for driving many of the symptoms that we have? Here's a quote from Dr. Michael Vanell Zacker, a neuroscientist and long COVID researcher at Massachusetts General Hospital and Harvard medical school. One core question is, do these microclots actually present a root cause or are they in response to something else that is ongoing? If the clots are left over from acute COVID, that would be one story. But if they're forming in response to spike protein that's leaking out from a reservoir, then that would be another story because you could clear the clots all day, but then they will just reform. So this is an interesting side of the debate. We don't yet know how crucial these microclots are in some of the symptoms that we're facing as people with long COVID. Here's a diagram and quote from fellow long hauler and advocate Hannah Davis who got tested for microclots. You can see the microclots on the right hand side with the healthy controls on the left. <laughs> So there is, as of yet, no clear treatment for long COVID. But when it comes to treating the microclots, there's a lot of research going into existing anticoagulant and antiplatelet drugs to use together to break down the clots. Sadly, many of us are not in a location where these tests are being offered to find out if we have them in the first place, let alone to get a treatment. However, there are over-the-counter enzyme supplements that work as natural clot busters. First off, we have serapeptase, made from bacteria and silkworm gut. Secondly, we have lumbrokinase. This is made from earthworms. And lastly, we have natokinase, which is made from a bacterial fermentation of soybeans. These can all be found online in supplement form, but please, please speak to a doctor to check if there are any interactions with any of the existing medication that you're taking and also do your own research. <laughs> 
I started doing a deep dive into this microclotting research when I watched a series on microclotting from Jez Medinger's channel. I then went onto Twitter and found several recovery stories from long haulers who had been ill for up to two years, who had used natokinase and serapeptase or lumbricanase and got to a near full recovery from the condition with these supplements. They noticed a difference with, within about 10 days of taking the supplements. And I asked them a few questions about it and I thought, you know, this seems like quite a safe supplement to take. On the 19th of December, I started taking one tablet of natokinase 2000 FUs. So this is, this is what I started taking on the 19th. I took it every morning on an empty stomach with water. So I try and have one litre of water with the supplement and then I don't eat for at least two hours after. I took this along with serapeptase. After two days, I started to feel extremely nauseous. So I decided to stop taking serapeptase and just take natokinase for two weeks and see and then add serapeptase. And as soon as I stopped taking serapeptase, the nausea subsided. So I didn't notice much of a difference for the first week or so. On the 2nd of Jan, I introduced serapeptase. By January 6th, I could definitely sense a difference, particularly because the last couple of weeks had been so much busier than normal. And I felt like I was able to do a lot more around the house. I had a much busier week physically. I could sit up for most of the day. And it also felt like I was bouncing back a lot quicker from waves of fatigue. I just needed a bit of time to regroup after I felt tired and then I could bounce back. And I'd also had a few nights of bad sleep, which normally would have set me back quite significantly, but didn't. So on January 9th, I decided to double my natokinase dose. At first, I felt great. And then all of my symptoms started to flare within a few days. Between the 9th and 27th of January, I struggled through the days. Chest pains and fatigue were at an all time high. My breathlessness was returning and I hadn't had that for maybe a year. There were possibly other factors, maybe aside from the supplements, maybe I increased my activity too much because they were masking the fatigue and I had to then suffer the consequences of that. Or it was the changes in weather, it's been particularly cold. But altogether, it meant that I was bed bound for that entire period between the 9th and the, and the 27th. So on the 28th, I wondered if there'd been a correlation between taking these enzymes, these supplements, and the deterioration of symptoms. So I stopped taking both of them altogether. On the 30th of January, I then decided to reintroduce natokinase because I had taken it for longer and I figured if I'm having a reaction to any of these, it's probably either the combination or the serapeptase that is causing it. I immediately felt like I had a bit more energy I had rested a bit more the week before, so that could be it as well. And it's been the same since then. I've been slowly regaining my energy. I've been feeling a lot better. So what I would say is that for me, it's inconclusive. I have had in the last six weeks, some of the worst long COVID days in the last six months. And I've also had the best long COVID days in the last six months where I've been able to do a lot more. I feel a lot better and I have a lot, a lot of energy. And I felt really good in the last week in comparison to when my symptoms were flaring. So it's really, really difficult to know what this supplement has been doing and how far it's been contributing to the last month. This is what is always tricky to figure out. I have anecdotally spoken to other people who have tried these supplements and what they have said is that for them it got worse before it got better. So maybe the first month is really about finding your groove with this and working out if it's the right supplement for you and then things improve from there. So I'm gonna keep going with natokinase. I'm not sure whether I will add serapeptase. There seems to be less evidence for its properties as a clot buster anyway. So I have a few tips and, and takeaways if you want to test this out for yourself. Firstly, do your research about what interactions these supplements might have. They are just supplements, but at the same time, they interact with a lot of medication. Take these enzymes on an empty stomach with water. Also make sure that it is enteric coated. This means that it's slow releasing. I've heard a 
have a lot of people who had a reaction to non-enteric coated versions of these supplements and like me it's probably going to take some trial and error to work out what works what agrees with you and what doesn't i'm going to keep going and i will also post an update at the three month mark to see where i'm at after this chaotic month that I've had trying these supplements. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts on natokinase, therapeptase, lumbrokinase, any of those, and microclotting in general, and any other treatments you've had or tests you've done related to microclotting. I'll see you in my next video.